Let's do a second example of building MO diagrams. So we'll talk about water. So in class, we talked about the atomic orbitals and their symmetry. And then we said that for the oxygen atom, which is a central atom, we had our atomic orbitals, the valence orbitals, 2s, and our three 2p orbitals. And they transform as 2a1 plus b1 plus b2. And remember, uh, so this 2a1 is because the s orbital and the pz orbital both transform as a1. They're both symmetric. And then our px orbital transforms as b1, and our py orbital transforms as b2. And then we had our two h atoms, which were related by symmetry. And we said that gamma 2h reduces down to the two socks, a1 plus b1. Great. So when we start building our MO diagram, um, what we want to do, again, step one is we want to start off with our atomic orbital energies. So uh, typically, when you have a central atom, I like to put it on the left side. So we'll put our oxygen atom over here. And then now we want to think about uh, the energies of our orbitals if we're going up in energy. So again, we have our y-axis. This is an energy. So this, is, this will be understood. I'm not going to draw it anymore after this. But first of all, the lower energy orbital is going to be our 2s orbital. That's lower energy than 2p. So that's from Gen Chem. So here we have our, uh, here's our 2s. And remember, this is going to be A1 symmetry. And then um, this, if you look in the textbook, has a potential energy of, I believe the table listed it as negative 32.38 EV. So you don't need to memorize the table, but uh, it should be good to, you should be able to kind of qualitatively know which orbital should be more stabilized. Obviously, this 2s orbital is going to be lower energy than our degenerate 2p orbitals. So here are our three 2p orbitals. They're all p orbitals on a free oxygen atom. So no interaction yet. So they all must be the same energy. So here are our p orbitals, 2p. And again, um, this is going to transform as a1, b1, and b2. And keep in mind, again, a1 is the pz, b1 is the px, b2 is the py. And this energy, I think, in the book was negative 15.8 EV. OK, now when you think about our two hydrogens, so I'll do this in blue. So H2O, right? We have two hydrogens and we have the oxygen atom. So remember, the two hydrogens have to be the same energy, and they're both 1s orbitals. So 1s orbitals, so even though they're 1s, they're going to be higher in energy than the oxygen because uh, oxygen is more electronegative. It also has more protons. So these are, it's going to hold in the electrons more. So the orbitals are lower energy. So it turns out that the 2h electron, or the 2h, sorry, the hydrogen 1s orbitals, which and we have two of them that are degenerate because they're two hydrogen atoms. These are our uh, 1s, and then so this energy in the table was about negative 13. Um, yeah, something around like that, around minus 13. EV, so slightly above the energies of our 2p orbitals on oxygen. Okay, uh, keep in mind, again, we have our A1 and we have B1 salks. So keep in mind, A1 looks like this and B1 looks like this. Okay, and I'm not, I'm not going to draw the atomic orbitals of oxygen. You already know what those look like. So now that we have our atomic orbitals, now we can find what the molecular orbitals should be by interacting the central atom atomic orbitals with our salks of the hydrogen atoms. So again, keep in mind, only salks of the same symmetry can interact. So this A1 salt can only interact with this A1 orbital as well as this PZ A1 orbital. And this B1 orbital can only interact with this B1 orbital here. And um, lastly, orbitals of the same energy uh, and greater overlap are going to interact more strongly, which means that their resulting combinations will be stabilized and destabilized uh, in a greater magnitude, respectively. So for example, this first A1 interaction with this s orbital, they're very far apart in energy. So this interaction will be weaker than the A1 interaction with this p orbital here. OK, but let's just get started. So here we have this, lower, this s orbital is of A1 symmetry, so we need to form a bonding combination. So this will be lowered. 
So first, you must form every, every interaction forms a bonding and anti-bonding combination, but there are some nuances. So here's our in the middle we have H2O, and then so this will, will be called our 2A1 because we're ignoring an A1 contribution from the 1s orbital, so that's why it's 2. Okay, and so this one will be the all-in phase combination of our oxygen 2s, and then we have it looks like this. So they're all in phase. Very cute. Okay. Um, great. I'll just do, let's do some easy ones first. So the B1 will also be stabilized. So here will be 1B1. And so this goes down, and here it goes down also. And then so here's our bonding combination between the Px and this B1 salk. So this will look like Okay, and then since we only have two B1 symmetry orbitals, we have to have just two coming out. So we have bonding, so the other one must be anti-bonding. So I'll draw that up here. Sorry, we're kind of running into things, but this will be two B1. So it must be the anti-bonding combination, which will be the out-of-phase combination. Great. Okay, um, and then we see this B2 atomic orbital, this, this is the Py orbital of oxygen, and there is no corresponding hydrogen sulk of the same symmetry. So therefore this cannot interact, and then this will be our non-bonding 1b2. So this will be non-bonding, and then so this one will look like, so going into the board like that, and then no contributions from the hydrogen atoms. Okay, and then so this is a sigma bond, if you want to label it as, you don't have to label it these, but this is sigma, this is sigma, this is sigma star. Now I've avoided doing the other A1 so far because we have an issue. The issue is, I've said that when you have two things, that come, two orbitals come together to form a bond, anti-bonding combination, but I've also said that the number of orbitals going in has to be the number of orbitals coming out. So what we have here is we have A1 with A1 and A1. So we only have three A1 um, salk slash three A1 molecular orbitals out. So only three A1 But on the other hand, if we were to do this the idea of bonding, anti-bonding, in principle, we should have here, if we have, I'll just draw this in two different colors. Okay, so we have our first A1 was our S orbital of oxygen. And then so we form a bonding A1 sulk, or a bonding molecular orbital with this A1 sulk. And then we form an anti-bonding, it would look something like this. So this will be the bonding combination, this is the anti-bonding combination. And then our other A1 salk, or our other A1 orbital rather, on oxygen was the PZ. So here's the bonding combination, and then here's the anti-bonding combination. Okay, so these are four but we could only have three. Four MOs. So the answer is that because the S orbital on oxygen are both of A1 symmetry, we get what's called orbital mixing. Meaning that the MOs, rather than being a combination of Two, linear combination of two orbitals each, right? This is, this would be, uh, I don't know, if we called SOC1, like f this was psi2, this would be phi1 plus psi2, this would be phi, negative phi1 plus psi2. So um, instead of that, we have a linear combination of three things together, and then they just have different um, coefficients. So what the answer is that 
whatever will most stabilize the molecule once we start filling in electrons will be what, what we do with for over orbital mixing. So the first orbital mixing that we could do, considering, is what if we take this orbital and then we subtract out this orbital. So again, these are A1s. I'm not going to draw the hydrogens, but they, they are there. This would end up giving us something that looks like this. And then we can then form another linear combination of our mixing of the P and Z orbitals. Um, let's call it this way. Wait, do I want to do this way? No, sorry. I want to do the other way. Oh, actually, let's do it this way. Sorry. And then we'll add this orbital here. And then this will give us something like, oh, wait, sorry. I'm going to do the other way. Oh, let's add this one. So if we add these two together, what we get out is this fat one down here and this. So you can see how we've now mixed these two orbitals and then ended up with these orbitals. So because of that, we could then um, take out a couple of these and then mix them. And so instead of having these four, we can end up with three orbitals that have a com combined P and Z character with these kind of low behavior. So that's what's happening here is if you think about this one, this is going to be the sort of intermediate uh, orbital here. So this will be sort of, okay, if we start where to draw our green orbital, our A1 salt here, this is sort of antibonding with respect to the S because we have this kind of antibonding interaction but sort of bonding with the PZ because we have this tiny lobe here. So it's not as stable as this one, but it's also not fully anti-bonding. So this is going to be kind of our intermediate A1. So we'll call this our 3A1. 3A1. And then this looks like Right, because it's coming down from the P, so it's sort of P bonding, PZ bonding with the A1. And then in this case, this sort of looks like our antibonding with respect to the S because it has the big fat out of phase lobe. So we have A1, so 2A1, 3A1, and then now we need this last combination here, which is even more antibonding. And then so we will now have our mixed orbital, so this will be our last A1. So this is our 4A1, and then this looks like uh, this one. So you can see that this is more destabilizing because so it's gone up in energy because we made this uh, out of phase lobe kind of fatter, so there's greater overlap between this out of phase lobe and this uh, unshaded. A1 sulk. So this is more destabilized, this is more stabilized, and then because of that we end up with net stabilization because once we start filling in electrons, oxygen has six valence electrons, and our two hydrogens each have one electron, so we have overall eight electrons. So we start filling electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. By stabilizing this 3A1 with orbital mixing, we can then end up with net stabilization. The cost of stabilizing this 3A1 is that we destabilize 4A1, but that's okay because 4A1 is unoccupied, so we don't care. Anyway, this is orbital mixing, and you have to keep this in mind that this happens once we have you know, multiple atomic orbitals of the same symmetry. You can form these linear combinations and end up with kind of more wonky-looking molecular orbitals in the end.